What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Thought Provoking Podcast. I got some special guests in the building. It's your boy Will Brown. I want to let everybody introduce themselves. My brother, I want to start with you. Just call me DJ. DJ. Yes, sir. I got a returning guest. You want to introduce uh, yourself? Kiki. Okay, Kiki. Got a first timer here. Yep, you got Keisha here. <laughs> I like that, I like that. So today we're going to be discussing... Pretty good one here. <laughs> Anybody want to throw it out? I want to mix it up with letting all y'all get in on this. Y'all, y'all want to throw it out? What we discussing? Dark versus light. That's right. Is that what it is? Light skin mm-hmm. versus dark skin in a black community. Yes, sir. This way it get real here. So <laughs> I definitely know before we get off into this one here, I want to always ask everybody that comes on, on a scale of 1 to 10, whether you rate yourself. So I want to swing it your way first. On a scale of 1 to 10, rate yourself mentally and business-wise, if you have a business. Okay, mentally, I'm at an 8 today. Um, Business-wise, I'm at like a 4. Okay, you've got a 4. Anything that can bring that up from a 4 to a little height? Um, No, I just got to prepare myself, um, timing. Getting everything together the right way. I need to run my business the correct way. And, yeah, it's just all about timing and getting it out there. Okay. You want to shout your business out? Yes. I'm at NBS Design. That's N-B-U-S Designs. Um, we do custom shirts, custom air fresheners, uh, pillows, bags, anything. I can pretty much customize any type of clothing, article, anything like that. Do the ashtrays, too? I'm not at the ashtrays right now. No, no ashtrays. No, no ashtrays. When I want to get a look. But I see a lot of people smoke, so maybe I hey, add that to the list. Okay, okay. We're going to work on getting you from mm-hmm. the phone on up when it comes Please. to business. Lady, I want to mm-hmm. swing it your way. On a scale of 1 to 10, where are you at mentally and business if you have one? Um, I'm going to say 8. My 8 mentally. I feel like there's some growth there, but I'm in, I'm in a good place at the moment. Okay. Business-wise, I'm going to say a three. Three. I'm still trying to figure out, pinpoint exactly what I want to do. I like that. So. I like that. We're going to get that up there, too. We're going to get that up there. My brother, my beige brother in over here. Man, I feel like, I think I'm sad with her, man. I'm about a good eight, yeah. Mentally, yeah. Yeah, sometimes 10, Damn. but uh, yeah, because I keep it working 24 7, you know. So, oh, shit. business wise, don't have any business at this moment, but uh, working wise, good eight there, too. I like good that. job. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. I like this vibe right here. Yeah, everybody on, <laughs> on, on the mental scale kind of high. I say I'm at an eight, too. Um, this one a little bit of sweet for me. Because this is episode 15, and this will conclude the first season of the Thought Provoking Podcast. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to have people recap, let me know what they thought about the first season, what we could have done better, um, who they liked, who they didn't like. You can go and throw that out there, too, you know. Let me (laughs) me know who you didn't like. So um, when it comes to business, I'm at a strong eight. I'm already looking forward to season two, what I'm going to put out, the direction I want to go in, the guests that I want to have on here, a um, few other business ventures that I got coming down the pipeline, too. So um, I would say I'm at an eight when it comes to business, too. So pretty good time right for on. me right now. So since I got y'all on here, before we get into the light skin versus dark skin conversation, I always want to mix it up. So here we go. Mm-hmm. Someone posted, stop going out on a second date if you're not ready for sex. (laughs) Now, since we got ladies in the room, I want to go ahead and start with y'all. What do you think about that statement there? Stop going on second dates if you're not ready for sex. I don't agree with it at all. I think when you dating, it's... I mean, it could lead up to that, but I don't think that should be the main focus. It's about getting to know that person, and it's going to take more than two dates to really get to know somebody. Um, if it happens, I mean, hey, it happens, but I wouldn't say, hey, two dates. I, two dates, I don't even think. Mm. They ain't even on your mind. No, it's, no, not in this day and age. I think you need to really get to know a person. Um, yeah, two days, I don't want somebody to put pressure on me like that, like. By the second day, we need to be having sex. No, okay. I don't agree with it. You don't agree, Uh-oh. lady. Go on, give I don't it to agree. Us. You should put 
a time frame on that. Number one. Number two, by a second date, <laughs> like, first of all, the first date, you're nervous. Number one. So then you're like, okay, maybe I like this person. The second day, you're really listening now. It's not so much of um, not as nervous anymore. I kind of know what he about a little bit. But now I, mean, I actually pay attention. So <clears throat> sometimes it takes more than two dates to have that attraction to somebody. Okay. Oh. My mm. brother. My question is, how old are you? <laughs> because that's some kiddie shit. You know what I mean? A man gonna take a woman out however many times it take if you're really interested in it. That's just me. I don't I don't really get that one. I'm I'm lost with that one. Like I said, you gotta be pretty maybe teenage. That's some teenage thoughts or something. Because second date, no. Nah. Because to be honest with you, I'm not even ready to lay down with you after second date. I got to be interested in how that feels. So for me, I don't agree either. That's some grown man shit right there. And I just want y'all to know those are the thoughts and ideas of this. <laughs> this cast right here, not those of the Talk the Broken Podcast with Will Brown. No, I'm just playing. I do think that um, by the second date, y'all shouldn't be giving it to these men. Now, when it comes to me, that's different. That's different. So if it takes more than one day, can we go on two dates in one day? And what so we can speed the process up. Actually, you can. can. Speed it I mean, up? you got you got breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can yeah, do three. three. So would, 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 would it make it better if I take you out to breakfast and then we go bowling after the fact and then we find a little dinner? That, that's three dates in one day. So now you can give it to me. First well, day. If it's that's, one day, that's technically thirsty. that's one day. Yeah. yeah. No, that's if three though. No. If it's one day, one, one day in a day. I can't win this argument here. Day. My brother ain't gonna sign with me, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fall, out. I'm not gonna fall out. Hey, bro, I can't help you with that. Okay, I'm not gonna fall out. Um, I am wanting to shout out my girl, Brittany Stewart, who was a former guest on here, and she got her seasonings here, so I want to definitely shout out her seasonings there. You can find her social media at Brittany Stewart, and you could also click the socialself.com, get you some of these seasonings here. Make you feel food A1. So, let's get into it. Light skin versus dark skin in the black community. This is definitely something that I think is real that don't get talked about a lot. We're quick to talk about, you know, when somebody non-black says something that's disrespectful to us or we don't like or, you know, their thoughts and feelings on, you know, us as black people. But we really don't explore the hate amongst each other or just not even so much as hate. Sometimes disrespect. Mm -hmm. Um... We don't explore it. So I want to get off into it. Um, I don't want to take over the conversation, but I do want to start with this point here. I'm a firm believer that a lot of it starts way back in slavery. And a lot of people sit there and say, oh, man, we don't want to hear about that slave stuff no more. It's not going on. But when you read books like the, the Willie Lynch, how they, you know, conquer and divide, it still goes on to this day. So before I get off into my spiel, I want to go ahead and start with you all. I'm going to start with Keisha. What has your experience been like with this situation, <clears throat> if any? Um, it's been a process. Um, when I was younger, it wasn't as easy to deal with. Okay. You got the black jokes. You got the people looking at you because you're different. Um, a lot of times you don't even feel pretty. You don't even have the confidence because you... Uh, being a dark-skinned person, you face a lot. Um, that's how I feel. Um, Growing up in school, especially if you go like if you go to school with a lot of white people, you're gonna stand out and you're gonna get a lot of racism. You if you the darkest one in your family, you're gonna get talked about too. I mean, well in my in my experience growing up, I was told I was an ugly baby, you know, like, oh, you was ugly, but then my other side of my family, like, no, they just feel like that cause you was dark, you know. And I just I think it didn't get better for me until I got older. Um, when I got adult, it's, it became more accepting. I, you know, I knew how to deal with it. But in school, mm -mm. Well, I felt that's... like dark skinned people was always looked down on. That's just my wow. opinion. I, I feel like they put light skinned people up, and when you a dark skinned, I, I'm just can speak for females. But when you a dark skinned female, you kind of got to work a little harder to be accepted. Um, like even with my hair or whatever they'd be like oh you know was you mixed or something because they used to oh you bought you know they used to saying black girls are bald-headed or you know black girls are ugly that's how i really that's how i heard a lot growing up like dark-skinned people was ugly mm. i didn't feel like that but that's just some of the feedback i got you know that's was that from your own people 
No, my people, well, no, not from my people, but, you know, just from the kids. I grew up, like, when I was lived on my block, it wasn't number Hispanics on my block. Mm. I remember walking to the to the corner because I it was a Dairy Queen on the corner where I stayed and I remember walking by myself one day and they just like you black what you doing over here like you so black like and I'm like you know I just kept walking because I was young and I, it was like a group of them but I think it came more so from like my classmates you know with the jokes I don't know if they were serious but you get teased a lot you know um my family I think it was a personal thing why I felt like this because my family is mostly light. It's a couple dark, but it's mo mainly light skinned people in my family. So I used to be like, why am I black? Why am I darker? Why, you know, but my auntie for sure, she always made it like, you so beautiful. I love your skin. I wish I was your color. Things like that helped me, you know, build my confidence and felt better about myself because I'm at school and then I had some people saying like, oh, she's black and blah, blah, blah. But I think it came more so from society than anything. Mm. That's just That's my heavy experience. Right there. And, and was this when you said school? Was this like junior high and high school? Or? No, mainly when you're younger. I mean, okay. I think as kids not used to seeing somebody look like them. Even in high school, I felt like they always compare light versus dark girls. It's always been a competition, light versus dark, my whole life. That's how it's been. But as I got older, even in high school, as I got older, it became more accepting. They like, you know, you see more kids like you um you can have your own sense of style you can you know dress how you want to dress and that helps out making you feel more confident about yourself but it mainly was society tv um you can go to different neighborhoods and look different i mean that's just i think it's more so society okay mm. brother i want to swing it your way as the light-skinned brother you know what man on the flip side I went through a little bit of that when um, preteen years, you know what I'm saying? Well, I was called white boy, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that mm -hmm. from, you know, darker shaded. But, um, man, teenage years on to early adulthood, man, all that changed for me. And it's been up from there, like, really, man. Like, I didn't had experiences. Like, when I first moved to Florida back in 98, I got offended. I'm going to tell you like this. Okay, <clears throat> let me back up. <clears throat> so... I got over it. You know, you got used to it and stuff. You're preteen years. But teenage years, you didn't hear much of that. Like she said, you know, you it kind of changes. You know, it's more accepting. Um, early adulthood, I moved to Florida in 98. And uh, the partner that lived there, we went to a block party in Miami. And, um, you know, we gets out the car and we standing there. You know, they out there with the four wheelers and everything. They going crazy. You know, Miami gets down like that or whatever. This chick walks past me, you know, she say, what up, Red? And I'm like, who the hell you calling Red? You know, and, <laughs> and he had to, you know, hey, bro, chill out. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that's what we call light-skinned people down south. You know what I'm saying? We call y'all Red. You know what I'm saying? So I had to calm down, and I learned from that, that you know, that little episode. But I got heated. I'm talking, I turned red. You know what I mean? <laughs> I learned from that episode that, man, it really wasn't what I thought it was. I'm talking about we started hitting the clubs. I'm talking about these darker women was coming at me so strong. I'm talking about grabbing my butt in the club. Hey, Red, hey, Red got me dancing, telling oh, me to spin shit. around. I thought I was auditioning to be pimp. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling man, it was, it was like they had, like, they didn't have many light-skinned guys down there. You know what I mean? I understand there's a lot of sun down there, but damn, I ain't know, you know, it was like they, I'm talking about they was aggressive as hell, man. I'm walking to the car, following me to the car and everything. It was... Them are some of the most aggressive women I've ever met in my life. In Florida. Coming from living up here, right, up north, right. moving down south. Came back in 99, man, started growing my hair, butters, had the good hair and all that. And then the women up here, same difference, you know. I had my fair share. So I didn't really... I didn't really go through the, you know what I'm saying, the light skin, dark skin was in mm -hmm. or out. Like, I didn't see that. I didn't realize that. I understand people went through it. But I didn't really go through it, man. It's always been... I feel like... I, I didn't have that issue, you know what I'm saying? I, I had my fair share, is what I call it. Hey, like, like, what is it? What is it? What is it? I had my fair share, you know what I'm saying? So, so, yeah, man, I never really had nothing traumatizing happen to me outside of preteen. And like I said, that first episode when I first moved to Florida, you know, so it's been good for me. And my thing is, you know, a lot of people don't even understand. It don't have to be a light versus dark thing. Sometimes you could think it's your, com your complexion. 
when it's actually something else about you that mm -hmm. somebody is yeah. not yeah. you know what I'm saying so you, but if you went through that and has been traumatized by that you automatically go there mm -hmm. when it could have been your personality it could have been the way you talk mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying you being a lame or whatever you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so I think a lot of times people just basically are traumatized you know what I'm saying yeah. Yeah. so I think your experience wasn't that bad because you one of them the barge brothers. See, you I mean, know what I'm saying? Really back, in the day, back in the day, y'all was the was shit. Mean, you know, yeah. they, they didn't want the Wesley Snipes looking brother. You know, I they mean, wanted I to. like y'all had them too. That's what I'm saying. I never really even, you know, like my friends that were dark. Mm -hmm. You know, they got women, so I'm like, I never really seen. The the, versus yeah, dark I didn't really see that. Like, you know, I always heard it and I knew it existed. But I never really seen the man, black guys are in and light guys are in. I used to laugh at that. But I'm like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Everybody around here dating and doing their thing. Like, what are y'all talking about? But That's interesting. Like, yeah. Two different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. Two different colors, too. Two different colors. Yeah. <laughs> but I related. I related. You know, yeah. the early no, years, yeah. pre-teen. Yeah. I went through some of that, too. Which, you know, I think times has did. definitely changed, too. I think being yep. dark is more accepting. Like, yeah. Most definitely. My returning guest. What's up? Give it to us. My <laughs> experience was definitely at elementary school was different. Okay. Um, I always wanted to be darker mm. because I always got the white girl thing, like constantly. Um, there would be girls who would put like stuff in my hair, wow. like gum and all of that, like that would sit behind mm. me. Like I got picked on a lot, and. They always made me feel like I was privileged or something, but I didn't never feel privileged because my father was mixed and I never had a relationship with him. Okay. So, um, my mom is black. My, what I see every day growing up, I want to be like that. And then to go be made fun of at a predominantly black school, like everybody all different shades and I'm like the lightest one, I'm getting picked on constantly. But I mean, of course I got better as um, I went to middle school and then high school. But it seemed like the darker girls didn't like me like right off bat because I was light skinned. And I was just like, I didn't really understand why. Um, then I would always get the what you mix with and I could never tell them because I didn't know what my dad was. Mm. So it's kind of like, I'm black. Like, no, you're not, but yes I am. Like, okay, I got nice hair, whatever, whatever. But I'm black, I never felt accepted anywhere. And then I would, like, if I would be in a room with all African-American people, I always get the question, what you mix with? What you mix with? What you mix with? And it's just kind of like, I don't really know. Um, I started telling people that I was half Hispanic because <laughs> it was easier mm -hmm. to not be associated right. with being white. Because I just didn't want to be associated with that, especially after being at elementary school and being called white girl and you white and all of this. And albino, I got called albino all the time and all of that. Um, so I never wanted to be associated with being white. So anything that I could throw out there that would make people stop calling me that, I did. Um, then when I'm in a room full of white people, they never ask me what I'm mixed with. I automatically get because of my mannerisms. I mean, I do have features of being black. They never ask me what I'm mixed with. Automatically, I'm black around them. So it's like the people that I'm closest to, that I feel closest to, don't accept me. And white people definitely don't accept me. So I just never felt like I fit in. So maybe high school, I was feeling better about it. But I always looked at dark skinned women as gorgeous. Like, oh my God, I wish I would try to tan, get as dark as I could in the summertime. And I just wow. loved it. Then a lot of people always identified me when I would tan as Hispanic. And so I like just started going with it. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. until I really found out, you know, what I was mixed with mm -hmm. or whatever. But I always identified, I wanted to identify as black, but I never felt accepted. Except with my family at home, because that's what I grew up with. So that was kind of my experience. Do you feel like it ever left you with any kind of trauma? A little bit, I would say. What would you say was the breaking point to where you was like, I don't even care? Um, probably when I came into my own, of saying, like, I am who I am. Don't matter my skin complexion. Um, I'm a person. Then I had children. 
And of course, they're all darker than me, even though they're still light. They're <laughs> all darker than me. I don't know. It just didn't matter as much anymore. Mm. Like, probably at, out of high school, probably. It still kind of um, hits me sometimes, especially um, when I started working at the hospital. I was the only black respiratory therapist at the time. And um, love my coworkers to death, but sometimes they could speak into ways that I think they were used to speaking that where there weren't any black people around. And I would kind of like question, like, that's kind of racist, but I don't think that they, they knew. So it would hit sometimes there too. And, but out of high school, I was just like, man, it is what it is. But I did see the struggle with the whole dark skin thing mm -hmm. because me and did like go crazy over light skinned women. But I would be looking at these dark skinned women like the y'all skin are gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm like, I always wanted that. And you know what's funny is I had an auntie that used to always tell me, I wish I was your color. And she was lying. I used to be like, what? she's lying. Right. <laughs> you don't want to be black. Like, I used to just swear she lying. So it's so funny that you say that because I, to this day, thought she was just lying to make me feel better. Like, she's I like, I just so wish I, I would wear darker makeup. I would <clears> try to stay in the sun in the summertime when I was younger. Like, I wanted that. Wow. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah, I'm it is interesting. If that's more so a female thing than a male thing. I think thing. it's more so more pressure on the females right. for sure. Wow. Like listen we, to y'all stories. That's yeah, what it guys, like. Are, like she said, they light skin, red. That's all they yeah. wanted. <laughs> wow. Not saying I've had a problem with guys, but it's like just observing. That's what it was. Wow. Light skin. Wow. Even to this day, it still seems like it's wow. still out there. I want my kids to have be lighter with pretty hair because yeah. they will feel they feel like they're more accepted. Mm -hmm. It's may not even be like a she ain't cute thing. It's a I want them to feel more accepted in the world. I definitely think it's an era thing um, because I hear the stories of which that's why I was asking you your experience because I've always heard in your era that that was the thing, you know, the Al B. Shores and, you know, all of that. The lighter skin version is what was in. It wasn't cool to be dark skinned, you know. Again, I ain't never heard nobody in there talking about, man, Wesley was the shit. <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Ooh, that mother. I never heard they that. They always made black jokes. They, they always them. made, you know, the black jokes or whatever. But then now you see, you know, people want the Morris Chestnuts mm -hmm. of the world yeah. and different ones that's, that's dark complected. Um, I'll say for me growing up, which, you know, was crazy to me. Obviously, I'm a darker guy. I ain't the dark, dark, but I'm dark. Um, I always wanted to be lighter. Always. I had a homeboy that I used to be real cool with in school, and uh, he was lighter. And I just used to be, I, when I say I thought of everything, I used to be like, damn, I'm dark. Why I couldn't be light? Yeah. Because now I want some tattoos. I want some shit with some yeah. color. You can't even see this shit. Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So I used to be like, damn, man, why I have to be so fucking dark, man? You I know, feel you on why that my daddy one. couldn't be light, or my mama could have been light. You know, my older sister, very light. Now, she has a different father, but. At the time, I ain't know that, and I'm like, well, you know, I want that. You know, my brother like I, I too. Like this. You know, I didn't realize, okay, you got a different father, but I wanted that because I'm thinking, shit, I want my tattoos yeah. or whatever. And I was a firm believer that the lighter skinned guys had the better picks of women. So in my mind, I'm like, shit, man, you know, I didn't, I didn't drew the short end of the stick, you know, and I really didn't like being dark at all. Now, I will say this. I've never experience nobody treating me funny because i was dark mm. i always was able to talk talk the talk and then i know me like i'm always trying to one up somebody so younger days i was always a show off to mask me feeling like i'm less than because i'm dark if i ever encountered it i had already had in my mind because i had a few dollars in my pocket i'm gonna call you broke whether you light skin, well, like I'm, I'm gonna talk the most shit to make sure that you don't even think like, oh, this coming from a place of he don't like himself. Right. Like, but if you attack me in this, I'm calling you broke, your hair nappy, whatever. I whoop your ass. You know, I, I was willing to go wherever I had to go just to mask being a dark mm -hmm. guy. You know, and I just used to be like, damn, you know, the light skin guys they get the better looking women. But then after a while, you know, you you kind of start to realize, yeah, I must be all right because. I'm getting the pics that I want, too. Mm -hmm. Some of these actually out here liking me for my conversation piece. And they start boosting my confidence and mm -hmm. shit. At that point, then I start really like doing the most. Like, 
this motherfucker is dumb. You like, yeah, you like, but he dumb. You want a dumb motherfucker? Like, you know, now I'm, now I'm doing to others what I assume was going on in my own. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for somebody to attack me. So before they do it, now I'm attacking everybody else because mm-hmm. now I got a little piece of a confidence. But that's where I was at with it. I literally hated being the dark guy. I was like, this ain't it. This ain't cool. You know, um, you know, people will have uh, darker skin and you hear the jokes about, you know, oh, you got the dirty skin tone, stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I'll tell y'all a funny story. When I had my first son, he was born and how real this got. So my son is light. His mother is light, but my son is lighter than the both of us. But anyway, when he was born, the tip of his ears was dark. And so we in the hospital. It was something that never even like crossed my mind of what he was going to be or whatever the case is. I didn't even care because at this point of me being older, you know, I embrace being dark. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm sexy. Shit. Mother can't <laughs> tell me. Not. I am that shit. I'm going to tell you before you say it. That, that's what my confidence was. But my uh, son had dark ears and I never forget this. Her aunt says, oh, that baby going to be black. Look at his ears. And my mother was hot instantly. I don't think they meant nothing by it. Yeah. It was just like you said, you saying whatever's on the top of it, but my mother was hot. What you mean? Going to be black. Like something wrong with it. And I'm talking about it set it off. Now I'm in there like, I kind of like that you're going off a little bit. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, shit, this is supposed to be a joyous moment. Oh just that gosh. quick, quick, you know, you saying whatever you said out your mouth. It killed the moment. Just off of them simply saying, oh, his ear is black. I know he's going to be black. They didn't think nothing of it, but my mother was hot. Even to uh, to this day, we joke and play like this sometimes. My son's mother, like we always talk shit where she make me mad. I always be like, your ball here self. Black people jokes. You just talking mm-hmm. shit. She would always be like, with your black self. Right. And she said it with force. I never took it like. Oh, you you don't like black? Because obviously she with me. Obviously we had a baby, so you must have really been liking this black boy. But when I say she was saying and my mother were here, oh my God. Straight she up. hits the roof. And I, I think at one point that literally strained their relationship for a good while. Just you playing, not thinking nothing of it, and you saying your black self. But this is how we play. Like I didn't really take it that way because, it, like I said, at that point, I had already had that confidence booster of I like being black. I enjoy being black. It, it really wasn't a thing to me. So just something as simple as that, you know, it killed the mood. Is your mom but dark? See, My mother's dark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But think, see, your ish. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. That's okay. Oh, you think <laughs> something triggered? Like That's why I was asked was she past. dark because... I think being an older woman at the same time, mm-hmm. um, I think she may have had things that she dealt with personally. I think she may not have, you know, had the confidence of being a darker woman. I'm not sure. We never did have that conversation. <clears throat> I never even asked, like, why does that upset you? You know, she let it be known that I don't like that. You know, mm-hmm. th- this boy is black, just black, not light, dark, just black. What What's the big deal? I never really dove into it, which, you know, I should have, but... Mm-hmm. I think I it's an old school thing. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Because she's around that era, closer to that mm-hmm. era, where our people were being treated a certain way yeah. because of the color of their skin, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, or her ancestors, or her people, or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. that can be a steal. But as far as for you, your issues sound self inflicted, not because of somebody else made it you was. feel that way. It was. In my mind, you know, I assume. Like I said, my stuff was just like for stupid reasons. I wanted tattoos and I thought, man, I want tattoos with color because I'm dark. This shit just going to look like green, dark ass feet. I get that. You I know? always said that, that, that. That's, that's what I thought. Now, what's crazy is I got tattoos with color and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, what you're yeah, See? Yeah. Like, see like, what I thought it was. You know, my shit, I, my shit on point. But yeah, it was a real thing for me. And I, it took me a long time to embrace being a darker guy. But again, no women ever treated me like shit because I was darker. No guys really like made dark jokes about me because I was also the aggressive dark guy. Like you weren't finna play with me like that. Just be ready to throw these hands, win, lose, or draw. It was on at that. So nobody ever treated me out of place. But to to your experience, that was a thing uh, for a lot of guys. The red bone. They even made songs. I mean, you hear yes. it on social media, on this, on the mm-hmm. mute, on the radio. It's like it's a thing. Also, it definitely society. is. Yeah. Now I want to get off into this because I'm glad that you brought this up. Um, this is one of the issues that I have um, being 2021. 
the issue I have with the black community is we're all black, different shades of black. I have an issue where we can't embrace what we are unless you're dark. Hmm. In, ta- in today's time, give you an example. Tupac made the song and he has the lyrics, the black of the beard, the sweet of the juice. We could vibe to it. We love it. <laughs> we fuck with it. It's all good. Childish Gabino got away with the Red Bone song just because it was a cool vibe. But if you come out right now and just say, oh, I love being a Red Bone, they're going to destroy you online. Right. What you mean you love being a Red Bone? Well, you know, I'm oh, so your skin tone complete. is better than dark. And it's like, why you can't embrace what you are? She's not a dark complected woman. Why she can't embrace if, if that's how she feel. Now, you know, obviously that's not her perspective. But if she felt that way. What's wrong with it? Mm-hmm. Now flip it for the guys. You're a light-skinned brother. Drake is the, you know, people who listen to Drake, you soft. You know, y'all can't fight. Darker-skinned guys, they they take that frustration out on what it used to be back in the day. So now you'll hear people say, not only will I not lose in a fight to a white boy, I'm going to beat the shit out of a light-skinned guy. I won't lose to them. They soft. Mm-hmm. Not realize some of these beat the dog shit out. You know where that nigga. shit came from. Yeah, that it's, it's society. Yeah, it's, it's, it's now that the dark skinned guys are in. You know, light skinned guys are considered now sensitive and uh-huh. soft. Uh-huh. And, you know, you so emotional. Like, you know, with that blanket, <laughs> really love <lost> the red. <laughs> like, so, yeah, like they they do that. And and I I had a screenshot in here where they were saying something about um light skinned guys. Uh, they cuddle with a woman, roll over and. It was some crazy stuff yeah, like that's what it was like. Finish, bro. <laughs> yeah, you finished, bro. Yeah, you finished, Yeah, I mean, it's, it's crazy, like, the, the mentality of stuff. And I had wrote this down, too, because it was a couple songs um, that I did pay attention to. Oh, Danny Lay. Obviously, she in the news and all that mm-hmm. with, with her struggles with, you know, her dude or whatever the case is. But she made the song, uh, Red Bone is what he like. And they destroyed oh, yeah, her. yeah, they did. They destroyed her. They destroyed her. her. And... What got me was, you know, people said initially, like, she ain't black. She didn't say she was black. She said red bone is what he like. And it's a song. It's man. a song, you know. <laughs> but again, Tupac made the black of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Exactly. Got another one for you. Pop Smoke got a song called Element. In the song Element, it says, like them dark skin. Love a melanin. People be in the club, they be vibing to it. Now, had he said something about light skin... They'd have been destroying pop smoke. So that's that's my issue where why can't you just embrace what you are? Mm-hmm. We got songs for the darker skin. And I get it. a lot of people will sit there and say it wasn't always like that. You look at the video vixens back in the day. They were uh, white or Latin or very light. We were overlooked. It's not like that now. Mm-mm. It's not like that now. So why can't people just embrace what they are? If I'm light skin, I'm embrace being light skin. Right. I'm dark skin, I'm embrace being dark skin. And I, I think I want to ask y'all this: Do y'all see it more so being a big fight between women? I think it's a women. I, I think women care more. They're more jealous. They. Yep. That's just how I feel. I think it comes from jealousy and insecurity within yourself. If you're confident about yourself, why do you care what the next person look yeah. like or what right. they wear and how they look? Correct. That's and I think I it's all get. in how you brought up, too. I'm sorry. So I think it's all in how you brought up because like I got two girls and they both dark and they're not as dark as me. But I know what I went through, so I make it my thing every day. You beautiful, you pretty. I can ask them right now. They can be like, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm beautiful. And I'm going to make sure I tell them that every day so they don't never feel like, oh, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not I'm not saying that no, no shade to my family, but I didn't have, you know, I didn't have that. Oh, you beautiful every single day. Are you right. pretty? So I, didn't, I had to, you know, think for myself. And I'm going off what everybody else saying. I didn't never have nobody, like, literally come up to me personally, like, and bully me just for being black. But... I think it's all in how you brought up and, and the confidence level you have within yourself. So, uh, that's yep. just my opinion. Yep. I agree. Definitely. I feel like it's sad to me because us being black women that are, the I think, the most beautiful women. Sorry. They could probably go on, like, <laughs> you know, uh, get on me about that but because we are all different shades and different shapes and different sizes you'll never see any other ethnicity be so different like you get such a variety and we all need to come together with that instead of like 
pitting each other against each other because of color of skin. Like, we're doing the same thing yeah. that the white people did to us back in the day. It's like we doing it all over again to ourselves, and they just sitting watching, thinking that it's, oh, look at them. Yeah, and like you said, they no think more. we all black anyway. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I mean, no matter what say, we all black. Right. I'm going to tell y'all a personal experience that I had with a, with a black woman. Um, I'm sure once she see this, she's going to be like, damn, this is the second, <laughs> the second time you told a story about me. But it, it fits with what I'm talking about. And by the way, I did extend the offer for her to come on the show or whatever. She, you know, couldn't make it. But I had made the, the statement that in East Chicago Central High School, the class of 2003 had the best looking black women. And so as I said that, it was all good at the time. We got on a debate about dating outside your race and, you know, it, it spilled off into some other stuff. If you ain't caught that, go back and watch that episode. But I put out there to her, I said, I have babies by two black women. I said the class of 2003 had the best black women. I didn't say women. I said black women. I made sure I put the emphasis on that. So she said, oh, yeah, you did say that. Which black woman? was the best to you so I, my response was instantly if all black women are beautiful what difference does it make who I name I never gave a name well I end up later on giving a name and it wasn't who she thought but she said oh I was expecting you to say this particular person which we know was a lighter skinned woman so it instantly became a thing of before we got into it oh that's cool you highlighting black women now we into it which black women? <laughs> Which is crazy to me. That's a woman for you. <laughs> I've never had an experience where two guys was going back and forth like about light skin versus dark skin. <laughs> I've never had that conversation with, with, with a guy. No. So I more That's so see saying. it like, I mean, you've seen black guys who say that, you know, what their preference is. I want a red bone. Or, man, I like the dark skin chicks or whatever the case is. Mm-hmm. But I will say this too. And I'm sure a lot of people going to, you know, feel upset when I say this. But there was a conversation that I had where I said, if we keep it real. A lot of times when you think you start naming beautiful women, most of the time. And I think it's just human nature now because of the music we hear, what we see on TV. As you start listing these women, most of what you're going to name are the lighter skinned women. You'll name off a few dark skin. But normally it's like, oh, shit. I forgot about her too. A lot of them don't come to your mind. And when, when people have that conversation, it's like, how can you say that? There's plenty of them. And then I always say, well, name them. Then you got to think long and hard. We're programmed without even realizing it. Because if somebody puts you on the spot and it's like, name a whole bunch of dark skinned women. Name me 10 dark skinned women that's beautiful. After a while, you're going to be like, shit, okay. <laughs> um, Shit, yes. Man, I probably could do that easily. I, I, I think it's different for me, man, because I never seen color like that. I was attracted to the person, the, the you know what I'm saying? The mm-hmm. the mental, the the physical, the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? I never seen color in women. You know, I could date a white woman, a black woman, a light skinned woman. I I didn't have that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't go through that. So there's no stereotype that darker men like lighter women. Yeah. <laughs> lighter for me, like I don't I don't get women. that, man. You know, and and Maybe I don't get that, but I understand there's people out there that say, I just like dark skin. How can you sit up here and say you only like dark skinned women? Like, I, but maybe I just don't understand. Yeah, it's How just can you sit up here and say, yeah, it's people that do it. I'm only going to date white women. I'm only, and I, I got family members. They got babies with all white women. Like, and What's that name? Dark. What's that name, bro? Because man, we, we, we ain't like gonna it. be doing all of that. You know, it, it needs to be. Oh, no, see, it, it amazes me that people can sit up here. You know, they can just point out what they like and and that be that. It, be and so that be that. Mm-hmm. Yes, like you have no. You know, that's it's, not a person. A color. I can't do that. I can't do that. Like, now I'll, I'll tell y'all this. I like them all. <laughs> as as a young African American male. In elementary, you know, you got the puppy love. We wanted the black women. When we got in junior high, all of a sudden, we wanted the Latin women. Because that was a new thing to us. Now it's like, oh, we used to seeing y'all black women. Uh, you in my neighborhood, uh, you know. But that Latin over there, I know y'all stay away from us. The only time I'm going to get to you is in school. 
or if I did to something like that, we didn't have access like that. You know, this is a whole new new era for us because, you know, depending on where you were at in the city, you had to go to a specific elementary school. So we went. It was mainly blacks. When we got in that junior high and we saw them lands, it was like. <laughs> was happening, you know, it, right, it's on right. at that point. So we didn't even really not everybody, but a lot of us didn't even want the black women no more. Then we got in high school and it was like, oh, this is a different breed of black women. Now you see breasts and you see some ass. And now it's like, oh, this a woman woman here. In our mind, because we just getting in high school. Now it's like them Latins. We weren't really stunning them like that no more. And then, you know, uh, different individuals, you know, they went after what they went after. But that was an actual thing. Like how you said, um, you know, I don't know how any guy wants one particular thing. That That, that is a real thing. You got I some know, guys man. who believe it's that. Weird. Like the lighter skinned woman. A lot of times get the most attention. So you feel like, oh, if I got the red bone with me, everybody gonna be like, damn, that's you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you flip it up, it is a thing where you realize, I think she's a beautiful dark skinned mm -hmm. woman. Thank you. If a guy gets with her, now you you feel good because you like shit. I ain't got just a, a regular black woman. My, my motherfucker chick look good. You pride, you know, so then those type of women. You know, get the little extra on it. Let's keep it real. I don't know no guy that would turn her down now. Mm -hmm. What she went through growing up, I don't know none of the, those guys. Like, if guys treated her like she, I don't know nobody who would do it now. Mm -hmm. But let's say she was ugly. Nobody would give a fuck about her experience. Oh, man, she's a black ass. So what you in there crying about, man? You, you know you ugly. Ain't nobody lying. A ain't she ugly? They gonna be doing all of that. So it's definitely a difference. But now, you know, people speak up and they keep it real. There's some light skinned ugly women. There's some light skinned ugly women. Yeah, yeah, no yeah. doubt. No doubt. No yeah. doubt. But I, I think I think that's a hell of a lot of ignorance. You yeah. know what I'm saying? To even you know what I'm saying? If you're not interested in somebody, you just, know, let them down softly. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a way to do things, man. You know man, what I'm we saying? Ignorant. Let somebody <laughs> else come at them like that. Yeah. Why do you yeah. have to be that exactly. person? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just don't understand. P. Have some respect, you know. And I think it's how we how we taught. Like, how you brought that up. How many of us have homeboys that if we own the ignorant shit, I'm in that dog and her because she black. Look at your black ass up. Or any of that kind of stuff. How many of us is going to say, hey, bro, that, that ain't cool. Mm -hmm. We don't do that over here. No. And if that's how you is, I ain't fucking with you because I think that's some ignorant shit. Normally, we be, ha, ha, yeah, you know what I'm saying? She, Man, dude, like that. the ignorance we, within yeah. the devil. Yeah. It's About like, any little thing, man. I, I think it's the wanting to be accepted so bad mm -hmm. yeah. because of our past mm -hmm. history. We want to be accepted. Period. It don't even matter. We ignorant, look stupid, don't even sound right. As long as you accept it, you. I guess I just been hiding up under a rock because I just really feel differently. Like, you know, my mother was dark and I was called white boy for a long time and harassed my preteen years. And it never made me feel like I wanted to be darker. I was comfortable in my own skin. My father is what he was but he went in my life just like you know you was mentioning mm -hmm. about yours I, I protected the darkness of my mother you know what I'm saying like mm -hmm. I but I still was okay with how I was yeah. you know what I'm saying I didn't feel like I need to be dark like my mother That's I just, a beautiful thing. you know what I'm saying like I I just didn't go through that and it's crazy it, it passes down to the kids yeah. because um, my kids was playing with uh, two girls that now I've taken in as my own. And all the kids, they end up playing, having a good time. Both of my kids are lighter. The oldest girl, she's lighter. The youngest girl is dark, dark like me. So as they playing, they was like selecting characters to play whatever game they was playing. And my youngest son says, oh, you gonna be this character because you the black one. <laughs> when I say when I found out, I beat his ass Wow! and don't know where he got it from, yeah. but he's a lighter skinned kid, mother's light skin. I mean, he see me, I'm dark. I don't even know where, where that dialogue even came from, but he said it so effortlessly. And my son is a sweetheart. You know, he want to get along with everybody, want to play with everybody like that's not even in him, but he picked it up from somewhere and he just said it so easily. Now you think about it. Let's say I didn't beat his ass. Let's say I just acted like it really wasn't a thing or an issue. 
that mentality now you're a teenager mm-hmm. yeah. now you're a grown man mm-hmm. and it just keeps going on yep. and on and on and i think we don't hold each other accountable with it and that that slave mentality is still amongst us you know we play laugh and joke and it's cool sometimes among certain groups mm-hmm. but then you go to somebody else they ain't playing with you like that mm-hmm. they don't even want to entertain that type of nonsense so it can get real between the black community oh yeah all day man no doubt Why? Have you all had any experiences to where you all had to ever step up for a friend who has been bullied by the color of their skin uh, in the black community or Mm. just the disrespect that you've seen go on with guys or or females and you had to step up and say, like, this ain't cool? I have, but it was more so towards me. I had one of my best friend house when I was younger and her cousin was like she was mixed and. She, well my friend she was dark too so i don't know why she came at me she just like for 10 minutes she just like you black you dark i just don't mm-hmm. like you she, like she really didn't like me because wow. i was dark and i was trying to be nice about because i'm like this is my best friend it's her cousin i just didn't want to get in the middle of it and she like and my friend had to step up and you know check her like this is my best friend like what's what's wrong with you but that was a time i experienced somebody acting funny towards me just because i was dark she just for whatever reason just came at me and picked me out of everybody like, I, I don't like you <laughs> and like, you say she was the about your complexion no she was the lighter mixed oh. one but my best friend her cousin was dark you know okay. she see her and play with her every day but it was oh. just like when i came around she just picked I don't like you because you dark and black. And uh, my friend took up for me, but I was just like, I was young at the time. She said so. you dark and black. Yeah. She, she left out the dark and beautiful, yeah, which she is didn't probably say what that. she, she called me all with. type of black problem, this. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was, they, they do that. And that's you know my, cousin, and that's that's my best friend. I was like, maybe she was just jealous or maybe it was something else because, you know, else. it was a shock to her. Man, y'all raw. Women be raw, man. When y'all want to be raw, y'all be raw. We Against are, each we, other, y'all, y'all cut y'all, y'all friends down. <laughs> I never had, to, I never looked at a woman and didn't like it because she was light. Even with the, 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 what I experienced, I never, I had best friends that was light skin. My family, like, I never felt like that. Like, I don't know. That's crazy to me. It I is. Just never did. It is. What would y'all say would be a good solution to kind of end a lot of this? Because it's a real thing, and it goes on to this day. Like, especially the Kanye West. Uh, and Drake albums hit at the same time. Oh man, people was killing it. Oh man, yeah. If if you don't relate to, um, if you don't relate to the the Kanye album, you soft because you listening to Drake and you this and you that. You sensitive. You know this this is a real thing that goes on and people post it so freely like it's mm-hmm. nothing to it. And I, I watch it like when I see people post it, I see people <coughs> liking it. They love it. They resharing it. Everybody think that it's funny. Until you get checked behind it. What would y'all say is the solution to end a lot of this ignorance? Bro, I'm going to be honest with you. How I see it. And this might sound like some movie type shit. But put a chip in everybody's brain and erase their fucking memory. Because these <laughs> people, with, man, our people ain't changing for shit. No. It get worse every single day, man. If yeah. y'all see everything on Instagram, Twitter, all the social media, every the news, you name, man, they get worse by the day, man. Mm. Being brainwashed. You cannot, you cannot fix these people. There's nothing you can do for these people, man. Yeah. It has to be a personal thing that you change for yourself. Mm-hmm. Can't nobody change you. You have to change yourself. So if you're not willing to change yourself, ain't shit nobody can tell you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Period. There's nothing out there for you, man. You got to do it for yourself. I say stop comparing yourself to others and uplift the next person. Like, I try to compliment people. Like, hey, even if you don't like something, find something. I mean, they don't like they sweat or something. You know, just try to find something to uplift people and make them feel good. Like, I had people that just had a shitty day and they just acting bad attitudes because I deal with the public. So, but I just sit there and I listen to them. I be nice to them. I give them a compliment. I'm like, dang, thank you for being nice to me. Like, and it just changed their whole attitude. Like, people always say, these people are just, you know, tripping out. They want to snap on people everywhere, cuss people out. But I've had a lot of instances where if you just be nice to a person or just, you know, just give them some type of respect, it'll bring them down just a little. So I say, why not? Why we can't just uplift the next person, give people compliments, make them feel good about themselves. And maybe, you know, they'll be nicer to the next person or, you know, gain a little bit more confidence not to act crazy out there in the world. That's what I think, maybe. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. Like Kobe Bryant used to say, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, 
I what think about like you? this is a good platform because yeah, we can hear both sides because mm. people always think the other side has it better. Like you kind of hear, you kind of it might click. Yeah, you know what I'm saying to say, like, oh yeah, that's kind of messed up. That um, like my experience, it would be like, oh, I never thought she would feel that way. I always thought she had the upper hand in your experience. Yeah, like so I think that helps. Like this platform helps. Okay. Let's say changing the world. Is our mic turned up <laughs> <laughs> on the Thought Provoking Podcast? Yes, this sir. is the platform to get it out there. It might yeah. not reach, you know, yes, many because I agree with a lot. Look, share, like, and comment. You, it's yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Have you have to want to change for yourself, but mm-hmm. I think it'll reach people. Because you know, if you count. think in one way and you for sure about what you thinking, who could change that? Yeah. You're the only one that could change that. I was test my say, man, about I, I'm a firm believer of starting holding your inner circle. If if it's going on in your inner circle, hold them accountable. If you see it on the internet, start calling it out. And I always say this too, when it comes to men, I've said it on a few episodes. Women have the power to change a lot of the ignorance that goes on when it comes to men. Mm-hmm. Think about how we we make money. Just take something as simple as a haircut. I ain't never. That's my homeboy right here. I ain't never went and got a fresh haircut and thought. Man, I'm going to send my boy a selfie. I want him to tell me I look good. I ain't never done that. <laughs> I ain't in the men. If you are, that's on you. I don't want it. We do it for the women. So women stop accepting ignorance across the board. Men to get their shit together. Stop sleeping with these ignorant-minded Ooh. motherfuckers. Mm. Stop giving them attention. Got a point. It'll stop. I, I mean, instantly, if I... Man, you know, what's up, B? What's up, ho? And, all, <laughs> and you be like... Nah, keep it moving. Right. All right. Hey, what's up, B? What's up, Ho? Mm-hmm. And then you keep accept me. Mm-hmm. Then I feel like, oh, you were stuck up. That's all it was. See, because she cool with it. I That's got her. Go. But if y'all both sit there and say, hey, we don't talk right there. The next time I approach her, hey, I apologize. Yep. You know? That's how you stop that ignorant mentality. Yeah. Women across the board can stop a lot of ignorant shit that goes on. When it comes to men, uplift these black women to sit there and say man all black women are beautiful like i did in that in that scenario where i was talking to the girl and i'm at, and i don't want to dog her like oh she was just on some ignorant shit i think she was really curious to see what type of black man are you i want to see like are you one of the black men that you just favor the red bone the lighter skin woman so i don't want to fault her for that but mm-hmm. the way i handled it was i said i thought all black women are beautiful you can just leave it at that. Yeah. You don't have to start comparing. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you keep it real, you know, the lighter skin woman. Because now you're validating some shit that's an ignorant mentality. You right. know, So if we kind of hold each other accountable and start calling it out, it'll make you think. I want to give y'all a little, little piece of, and this is not like a, a, um, a light skin versus dark skin, but it goes to the, to the degree of holding someone accountable. My man right here, years ago... Um, I picked up, and you remember this after I tell it, I picked up my youngest son from daycare. Took him home. I got him a bath. Um, <laughs> I cooked in the house. I cleaned up everything. I left all my cabinets open. So at the time, you know, his mother and me were together. She come home. I made sure she didn't have to do nothing but just come home, get in the shower. You could eat, relax. I done done everything. And she just said something as simple as, why you got all the cabinets open? And it set me to fuck off. <laughs> It set me to fuck off. That's what you know. I was hot because I'm like I didn't get him from daycare. Wow. I didn't clean him up. He good to go. He didn't eat. All you gotta do is sit down and eat. I erupted, it. and I was like, "This my motherfucking uh, this my motherfucking place." <laughs> I could open up every motherfucking cabinet in this bitch. This shit is mine. Oh, man. Like, because I'm so pissed off that you ain't acknowledged the real shit that went on. Yeah. And you talking about these cabinets being open. I was like, you could have shut that shit yourself. And, and I felt like I was the man. Like, I cussed your ass out. I told you, I bet you won't do this shit no more. That's how I felt. I tell him about it. He was like, nah, bro, that ain't, that ain't the move. I was like, yes, it is. Like, you must have didn't hear the story, brother. Let me, let me run it back again. He was like, nah, bro. He said, let me tell you something. Let that whole scenario play out and you flip it. Where this woman, you know, wanted to be there with you. Now, let's say, for instance, the roles are reversed. You need to be in that woman's house. And the roles are reversed where she say that shit back to you. How would you feel? I initially want to say, I ain't going to be in that situation. But you don't know. You never know. And when I sat back and I thought about it, I was like, damn, I was in the wrong. 
Now, this is my homeboy <laughs> telling me. I'm expecting him to be on some yeah. real homeboy shit and agree with what I'm saying. Yeah, you right, bro. You told her. He was like, nah, bro, that ain't cool. So that goes to the degree to tell people, not only can women stop it, but if we hold each other accountable yeah. for the ignorance that comes out of our mouth, mm -hmm. the ignorant behaviors, a lot of this shit can change. He could have agreed with me, and I'd have kept doing it. I'd have kept doing it. I stopped instantly once I heard him say, and I apologized. Well, back then, I was a king, man. If I said it, I said it. I mean, you, you made me say it, so, you know, next time, if you don't make me say it again, you know, then, you know, I'm on, mm -hmm. I couldn't just openly say sorry. He kept it real with me and was like, bro, that ain't the move. So and I stopped. Man, right? We definitely man, you know what? It's a balance because, I, you know, it's like we get better advice than we, you know what I'm saying, yeah. take our own. You know what I'm saying? We you definitely. can give better advice than you yeah. actually do for yourself, you we know, and he's actually that. did the same for me. Cause I done said something or did something stupid. Fuck we, all y'all. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be on the next season. <laughs> we definitely need that. Cause I see it a lot on social media. Like people say some ignorant stuff and then they friends down there just yeah. encouraging yeah. it. Yeah, just, girl, do that up. No. You looking like what? I don't they think it's cool. The they think it's cool. They think it's cool. They want to be cool. They want to be accepted. Yeah. Most yeah. Definitely. When are we gonna stop looking at superficial things and start looking deeper? Yes. That's when things will change. Also. Mm -hmm. Like it's about a person. It's not about. The color of my skin, or who gonna see you with me and be like, "Oh, you got this fine, this the fine now." Oh, you know when you got that percentage, ignorance versus, you know, let's say level headed. How can that? How can you ever win? Mm -hmm. Let's say eighty twenty. How you gonna catch up to that? You know what I'm saying? Like they winning. We gotta do better. So it's gonna, we got to. it's gonna be hard to change people, man. That's what I'm getting at. It's gonna be. You gotta hard. start making attempts. That's all. We oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. People accountable. Yeah. When we Never start nothing wrong accountable, with that. Putting it on some people's minds to say, hey, well, they ain't cool. Because as long as we don't say nothing, your silence is promoting it a lot of times. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of times we look at it and say, well, they ain't really my business. Mm -hmm. No, it is because if you know you're not cool with it, if you don't know you wouldn't want your daughter treated that way mm -hmm. or your sister. Or Aunt, whoever the case may be, start calling that stuff out. There's nothing wrong with it. And I and think I it is, that. it'll stop. It, it, it at least may slow it down. Then women can put it over the top to say, we done with that. Mm -hmm. We done with taking it from me. And I don't know exactly. about how we going to fix this light skin versus dark skin in the black community amongst women. That I ain't came up with a solution with. But if you're watching this, mm -hmm. feel free to inbox and, and, and give us some suggestions because it's a real thing. I will say women got more power than they know they have. They do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. And they could be the biggest change her things mm -hmm. exactly. it's our job just to stand behind that woman and make sure she knows she's beautiful and you know what i'm saying be that backbone that strength for her and stuff like that but mm -hmm. the women you know i don't think we, yeah. we realize that i know that we need to hear that more often because it feels mm -hmm. good to mm -hmm. actually hear that it's from truth that's truth i can't birth the human <laughs> yeah, that's right. We need to take our power back. Mm -hmm. take our power back. Yeah. That's right. We about that's to right. take over. <laughs> Y'all, it's how we multiply. Mm -hmm. It won't happen no other way. Yeah. So this is the portion of the show where I like to turn it over to you all. If there's anything that you all want to, you know, bring up, if there's some comments y'all want to go back and forth, another subject y'all kind of want to talk about, y'all got some questions, whatever. If I want to go and turn it over to you all. So um, mm -hmm. let's we'll start with you, Keish. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me on the show. Um, I'm gonna try to do my part to help change this too. I don't know how, but I'm. Um, I guess the first step is being on the show today and talking about the struggles. And I hopefully I reach out to somebody or maybe somebody even going through it right now, not feeling good about themselves, or even somebody might hate the next person for how they look. Um, but it start within us and. I'm willing to help make a change. And like I said, thank you for having me. I appreciate you coming <laughs> and sharing your experience. My brother, I want to swing at your way. Oh, man, same thing. I appreciate this. A little under the weather, but, you know, I <laughs> made it. Virus. And uh, we definitely need to keep this going, <laughs> yeah. brother, because yeah. who else is doing this, especially for our area, man? Yeah. So this is big, you know what I mean? So we, we got to keep it coming, man. Definitely. You guys been working, man. So Appreciate you know. that, my brother. Appreciate it. My sister. I definitely want to say I appreciate you. Most definitely. Definitely my second time. I've enjoyed it. This is good for me. Mm -hmm. It's kind of therapeutic. Yeah, well, yeah. It's deep. And uh, 
I just want like one disclaimer out there. Just because I'm light skinned I am not stuck up. Oh, <laughs> yeah, not throw one that part out of me. I know that's right. Stuck up. Come so on, I'm give me that on that one. Right on. Part of me. But um, thanks. This is Got the wrong good. idea about us. Yeah. Exactly. So you whoop a little ass too. You know, you whoop a little ass. So, so that narrative about light skinned brothers, you, you whoop a little ass. See, we 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 can tell the ones that kind of you know they Man, smooth. I have none by. No, but to see, let me tell you something. You see them smooth ass glasses you got? Them the motherfuckers one. fly. Yeah. When you take them motherfuckers off, you turn into a whole other yeah. house. Oh. See, I'm, I got tired of your shit. <laughs> you got real at that point, man. So yeah, put that narrative out there. That, that light skin the song, it ain't for everybody, bro. Whoop a little ass, you know. <laughs> Go and rep that GI, brother. I already know you I'll get down, Where man. I'm from? That's right. That's right. Yes, um, this is a bittersweet moment for me because this is the end of season one. I hope you all like one through fifteen. Definitely had a lot of, a lot of ups and downs with it. Questioning myself whether or not I wanted to put it out there. What will people think? Because you never know. Mm-hmm. It all starts with an idea, and you know, you you talking to your homeboys, man. I want to do this. I want to do that. But when you put it out to the public, you get bits and pieces of your life. People comment. They got stuff to say. So it's like, um. Mm. But it's been a good uh, process. People mm-hmm. have liked it. You all have, you know, come through for me, making it as big as it is. And it's only up from there. Um, and I always say each episode, I always want to give a piece of my life. So I'm glad that I could share it with you all. This is a dope, dope segment. So back in, I would say 2015, um, we threw a concert trying to promote artists and stuff and we got scammed out of a lot of money after we got scammed i fell on hard times i was trying to still catch up still kind of work um but it just didn't happen and i mean i I completely fell off i struggled bad where it was just a few dollars left in my check was still getting my kids had four vehicles at the time and it was one of them to where now my kids lifestyle was going to change I've always been blessed and in a position that I've always been able to provide for my kids, never needed for nothing, even if the mamas didn't have it. I got it. Like, it was never a situation. I never missed work. I worked my ass off. I always was good with money. But I made a bad investment, and it cost me in the end. And I struggled bad with this situation. You know, it was all the bills I paid, but with these few dollars left, you know, what what's cheaper to put gas in this truck this box chevy this buick this dodge charger and i had to make it work you know until the following week you know and there was people that over the years i've lent friends family money all of that kind of stuff and i mean they kind of knew what my situation was it was just like damn damn you going and you know it, it really pissed me off i never asked nobody so let me put this out i never asked nobody to say hey can you give me this? I just felt like I would deal with it. But being the kind of guy that I was, if you went through it, I would always make sure I go out of my way to say, you don't even have to ask. You're my guy. Here you go. You know, this is for you or whatever the case may be. So when other people didn't come through for me like that, it kind of, you know, it, it was a hurtful thing. You know, I had too much pride to ask somebody. I felt like you should have just stepped up. But I mean, I struggled bad. My brother right here years ago. Knew I was going through it. Knew I was stressed out. Gave me a gesture just to say, here go $500. And this stuff that he don't talk about, you know, because he's that type of guy that if I did it, I just did it from the kindness of my heart. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. The brother gave me that $500 to get on my feet to where I didn't have to struggle to where now my kids didn't even know that it was a difference. Because, I mean, when I say bad, it was Okay, we're going to eat strictly just spaghetti because that lasts a couple days. We're going to do sloppy joes. That lasts a couple days because I still need gas and I still need to go to work. That brother put that money in my pocket, never asked for it back. was like, brother, get on your feet, like do your thing. Gave me words of encouragement and all of that. And I just want to say, brother, I thank you for that. I've learned a lot from this brother being in my mid-20s. I didn't know how to cook. I never felt I needed to. I always felt like, you know, I got women, I got baby mamas. My mother, like, I don't need to cook. Got kids and everything. And I watched him. A lot of the, a lot of the things that I do in life stems from this brother. I watch what he did when it comes to money, how he treat women, how he carry himself. You know, the standard that he put on himself and family and kids. I was like, I like that. You know, I don't drink. You see, I got a liquor cabinet. I know well, y'all can't see it, but I got a liquor cabinet when company come. And, you know, y'all got wine and drink Red cup. We know you know you're right there. I learned a lot of that stuff from him. So, brother, I want to slide this your way. This should have been some notes here. Brother, I just want you to peel that back, man. 
Brother, that five hundred dollars, I never forgot about that. I wanted to put no, 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 no. I put some interest on it. I put some interest on it because this same this same money that you gave me way back then, brother. It, it that was helped me get that was it was, you, but it helped me get back on my feet and it was something that I never forgot about. Oh, and that's now that crazy, I'm back man, on my feet. Yes, right 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 take that for you, my brother. You take that for you, man. Whatever was, you want to do with real. it, man. That that's for you, man. I put some interest on top of your money. But oh. I, I wanted to make sure that when I brought you on here, that I did wow. do it for you because I wanted now, to be on, an example to other people. When you know people that you cool with, yeah, my brother, when you see that people that you close to close to are struggling down and out and you in a position to help yeah. them help them folks man yep. and also when you have people good to you and they do come through for you mm -hmm. acknowledge that don't just sit there and take advantage and just say yeah, oh right. man he gave it to me i ain't need that um he he said i ain't got to give it back and, it's, and that's just it no when you in a position do stuff and, and don't get me wrong over the years I've always acknowledged his birthday or, you know, any of yeah. that kind of stuff. When he come over, I try and make sure that the particular drink that he like, I always try and go out of my way to acknowledge. No, he's been a I, brother. I, I, I do know that. And, and even a sense of family. I've talked about it on, on camera. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that. I got that from this brother. He's embraced me and let me be around his sisters and all of I could call his sisters, brothers. They come through for me like nothing because now I'm a part of family. So that was my first taste of what real family is. So yeah. I wanted to acknowledge my brother. Go over that up, brother, just so they can see how I know I am. <laughs> Do I get a <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. That's what's up. See, you be good, you get unexpected yeah, man, blessings. I that's, appreciate that's, that's my good. Really? I, I, that, is that why I'm on the show today? Man? That's, you know, that's you know. Cool. We let the people decide. Was no, that why to, you was on here, man? man. But I, I need to spread that you, more out here. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, yeah. it. We're good. that's, that's the it. formula, right? That's there. it. That's See, it. Yeah. How can you be a bad person like that? That's. No, like no, that. he's A1. That's why I've been knowing him. As long as I've known him, that's why we've been like we've been. And I always had his back and I always been there for him. That's and what's same, up. vice versa. Much appreciated. He always know. If you ever need anything, call me. Yes, sir. Yes, saying? sir. So, I like right, that. Man. That's the wrap. You can't even season. find that in family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all better hold on to that now. That's real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything else y'all want to throw out there? You finna take us to dinner? Yeah, <laughs> man. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll take y'all to dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> My woman waiting on me tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get home. <laughs> I, I both tell we you go out to dinner. <laughs> That's what's up. Okay, well, let's go and wrap this thing up. Uh, I appreciate all the support, yeah, everybody that has liked the episodes, subscribed to it, you shared it, put the word of mouth out, sent it through a text, anything that you've done. I definitely appreciate it. This is the season one. Hope y'all looking forward to season two. This is the Thought Provoking Podcast. Later. All right.